Mm. Welcome back to Access Hollywood Live. That's making a murder a documentary in Laura Ricciardi with her partner, Maura DeMoss, on The Daily Show, explaining their process behind the controversial documentary. So a lot has been said about their perspective while making the series. As we you know, they're saying this is about a look at the criminal justice system. Well, of course, the viewers and the consumers of Making a Murderer didn't, uh, didn't really latch on to that. They're thinking, hey, man, this guy's innocent. Get let's, to the feud, Bill. Let's sign petitions. All right, so as we <laughs> talked about earlier, Nancy Grace and I have been discussing this story weekly, and uh, I had a fill-in last week, and, well, yesterday we uh, got together again. <laughs> Nancy, I'm going to bet the farm that you take issue with the filmmakers claiming to have an objective view. People that they interviewed have told us that it was very clear during the interviews with the Netflix producers that they believed Avery to be innocent and that that was their perspective. They're saying that people missed the point. And I'm thinking about this Sean Penn interview with El Chapo. He says, geez, Charlie Rose, people missed my point. They're picking out all the details and the funny little things and the long bad writing and all that about El Chapo and then their sensation, sensationalism of El Chapo, but they're missing my point, which is about the drug war. What these people are saying is that if you're a poor person in America, the criminal justice system doesn't care, and if they think that you're guilty, they can come after you and put you away. This guy had a lawsuit for $36 million against Manitowoc County, and they had, he had to settle it for $400,000, which was just enough and just in time to pay his lawyers. Someone else who doesn't have that four hundred grand has no chance if Manitowoc or any other sheriff's department or any law enforcement thinks you're guilty in America, you're done and you don't have a prayer. That's their point. Did you miss it? I was wondering where that question was going to come into that. that well, it's loaded with perspective. You just excellent me perspective. Bush, but Wait, let me tell you something. That's excellent perspective. Did you miss the point? No, I did not miss the point. And as a matter of fact, I agree with part of what you said. For many, many years, including the time during which I was a felony prosecutor in inner city Atlanta, I have long maintained that there is rich man's justice celebrity justice and justice for the rest of us, regular people, much less poverty-stricken people. I completely agree with that. However, that does not negate the fact, the central fact, that Stephen Avery murdered Teresa Hallback. Your question, Mr. Bush, is off point. The issue is, did he kill Teresa Avery? I'm not arguing there's a different tier of justice for poor people in America. After four hours of deliberation, seven people said not guilty, right? Two had no idea, and, or two were said guilty, and three had no idea. What do you think happened in there? Do you think that uh, one of the jurors just was, was extremely persistent? Because seven in the beginning said not guilty, and then they um, all came over. Now, I assume that you're getting that count from, from the, the document unless they're was. lying unless they're lying and that's what that that's what we got oh you mean the jury yeah richard Mahler. <sighs> i'm exhausted too nancy just you just keep going we'll all be out of you know soon. what it's time for me to start my show taping i'm five minutes late no no so no I'll come on keep going question. nancy you're doing great <laughs> And off she went. <laughs> she, she literally took off her microphone and left. And left. And by the way, here she goes. I'm, I'm done with, uh, with, you know, Look at him. your face. You're going, huh. Wait, keep it in. What'd you I say? I win? No, 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 no. I'm watching it. I didn't say that. Office. Did I say that? I shouldn't have said that. Please keep that I said it. I said it. No, it was funny. You know, now that I reflect upon it, I think I did. I know, but. The best part was this. <sighs> well, I always say eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, huff for a huff. If you get a huff, you give you a huff back with a huff. That was great. They said she was late for her show. She had to go. But I thought all those questions, we just needed some well, answers I, on what's going on. Listen, we did start a little late. Um, I don't think she knows. It was a two-way setup, you know, two-way satellite. I don't think she knows that I was also late because she was still getting her thing on while I slid quickly in the chair. But everybody started a little late, and she did have to go. We were very concerned. I was concerned. I said, listen. I love sparring with Nancy, and she's tough. Yeah. And I don't, I don't want her angry at me or thinking that you know my huff was rude or anything. Can we please look into that? And then he I got think back. She loves you, and I think that she, this is her thing. She loves you, and she likes to spar with anybody. She said before she went on, I was listening. She's like, this is what I do. It's yeah, she my likes thing. to get you out of your lane, rattle you a little bit. That's and why I pulled her back in with it. No, no, no. Don't analyze my question and tell me it was lacking. You know, yeah. It's a perspective question. But uh, I, but we called and we found out that Nancy's no. 
Absolutely no yeah. problem. That's the way she just just leaves just, people. It's time to go. When I'm, I'm done, start I'm done. Doing that. I right. love her.